<laughs> and then you buy a stool. Hello everyone, welcome back to Smith's Garage. In today's episode, I'm gonna tell you how I picked out the rims and tires for my Volkswagen Beetle. Now, I'm gonna start off by telling you exactly what's on my car, so you can copy it one-to-one -one if you would like. And then I'll explain how I picked out the sizes in case you wanna figure out your own custom sizes yourself. So these rims are probably the favorite, like one of my favorite parts of the car. Um, I found a guy who runs a company called Deep V's. He runs his company through a form called the Samba. I'll put a link to the, uh, his company in my description. And what he does is he takes the original bolt pattern insert for a Volkswagen rim. He cuts them out and he welds them onto some extra wide outer rim pieces off of, I don't even know what they're from, but they're very nice quality. They're easy to balance. And honestly, my only complaint is just that there's this little crack right in like a, this deep groove and it's really hard to clean in there, but it's just part of the style. You can't really do anything about it. But uh, on the back, I have a set of his eight inch wide rims and in the front, I have a set of his six inch wide rims. I would like to say that I have some magical formula for you to figure out what, like for you to figure out what your offset is. But if I'm being completely honest with you, this guy has it pre-made for your car for any Volkswagen, in fact. And uh, he explains how they need to fit and you don't really need to pick out any numbers. The only hard part is picking, picking out the tire, which I'll tell you what I did momentarily. But when you're getting an eight inch wide rim on the back, plan with those rims is for the wheel to tuck up into your fender. Right now I have the car a little bit higher than I usually do um because i had it really low i'll put a picture up of when it was like really low and i was scraping stuff on the ground left right and center so i raised the car up a little higher which i don't like the look of as much but i'd rather not uh bottom out on literally everything but the eight inch wide wheel if you're lowering it it needs to tuck up underneath and that is going to affect what tires you pick for your rims so moving on to the tires I wanted to go for a nice high quality tire that I didn't really mind if they were retro looking or not. I just wanted something I knew was going to stick to the road, get me good traction. So I ended up picking Continental Extreme Contact Sports. So in the back, I am running a 205. Okay, I thought it said something different for a second. I'm running a 205 50 ZR15. And I will tell you how I picked out that size in a minute, but I'll tell you which one's on the front. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I'm running a 175-55R15. So now the important part when you're picking out the tires for your car is in the back, you need to think about your tread width because you can have tread width that is the same as the width of your rim and that'll give you a nice straight sidewall, or you can get tread width that's a little li smaller and you can have your tire stretch out onto the rim a little bit. I wanted to, I'm not a fan of people who put like really thin tires on their car. I mean, you can do what you want with your car, but that's not my style. I wanted a bit of a thicker rubber profile. So what I made sure to do was I used to get like pieces of cardboard, measure out my diameter, cut them out, and hold them up in there. And I made sure that when I was picking my tread width, because I knew these eight inch rims had to tuck under my fender a little bit, I made sure my tread was a little bit narrower than my rim so that it didn't stick out too much because I didn't want to rub on my fender well. Because even if your tire is down here, you have to remember that when you're hitting bumps, your suspension is going to compress and your tire is going to come up. And yes, because it's a transaxle on the back, the wheels are going to come in as they go up. You just want to be careful because the last thing you want is to rub your paint off on the inside of your fender and then have it start rusting and whatever. I'd like to add that I do actually have rubbing issues on my outer fender well when my wheel is turned. Um, you can't see it at all from the outside and I'm not too worried about it personally. And on the passenger side, I also rub on the headlight bucket a little bit. 
Um, it doesn't on this side, and I'm not sure why it's a little uneven like that, but that's one thing you have to watch out for. But I want to explain the process of picking out a custom size rim because I know that some of you probably clicked on this video and are disappointed that I just bought these and they were already the size I needed. So I'm gonna go over to my Dodge because I just ordered a set of custom size rims and tires for it and I wanna to talk to you about how I picked those out and hopefully you can apply that knowledge to whatever vehicle you're planning on picking your rims and tires for. All right, so this is the box for, to my 1962 Dodge D200. If you wanna know more about this truck, check out some of my other videos, but I'm just using this as an example to show you how I pick out rims and tires for a vehicle. I start by doing some research and figuring out what my intended use is for the vehicle because for this, my Beetle, I didn't really have any intended use. I just wanted to get like a nice beefy looking wheel. So then I, you could tell the car was kind of a sleeper. But for this truck, I wanted to go a little bit more uh, track style, not just drag racing, but like I want it to be able to corner well. And because I wanted it to be able to corner well, I can't just look in my wheel tub and pick out the widest size set of wheels I can find because I found out that if you go over like a 12 inch rear tire, you start to lose some steering control. Like it'll start hugging into different grooves in the road. And I didn't really want that. So I discovered that I kind of want a, for the back it's pretty easy because they're not turning much. So I went, I'm gonna go with the 12 inch wide tire on the back. And that's the easiest number to figure out because like I said, they don't turn. As of my diameter, um, there's a couple ways I like to try to figure this out. And my first one is, is I like to look at the style of my rim and if I want to have a large profile rubber on the rim. I, as I said with my Beetle, like a larger profile rubber. So my goal for this was to have three to four inches of tire. And if I had three to four inches of tire, how much of diameter do I want on my rim? And the reason why I don't have an exact size for how much tire I want is because once I found the rims that I want to purchase, they don't really have like every single size. They have a couple like basic ones. Um, and the rims I ended up looking at for this um, are Boyd Coddington Columbus series in bronze. And because I'm a very visual person and I don't like only thinking about things, I like to cut things to visualize. So I cut these. Uh, for my Beetle, I made them out of cardboard, but I felt like a higher budget quality for my truck. So I ended up plasma cutting these out. And so it's my bolt pattern for the axle that I used to have on the truck. And you'll notice these little notches around the outside. Those notches show me where the rim will stop and where the tire will start. And I made these just so I can visualize, I can stick them right up underneath into my truck and kind of look at them. Obviously this bed isn't at the height that I will have it, but you can kind of see that they fill the fender well pretty nicely. So for the back, I figured out that I pretty much just want a 12 inch wide rim. And then I think my uh, rim, rim diameter is 22 inches. And then the rubber is three inches. But for the front, this is where things get a lot more complicated because that wheel has to turn inside of your fender well. And that adds a whole level of complexity. So this is where I was about at a bit of an advantage because I don't know if any of you would have the opportunity to do this. I borrowed a set of really nice rims and tires from somebody else who was working on their car and they didn't need them for like that weekend. So I borrowed them and they were similar size to what I wanted. So I took them to the front of the truck when I still had my front fenders on and I set them in. I put some tape on the ground to mark like the center points and where my axle would come to. I measured the width to make sure that the width was going to be perfect and spot on. And I sat in there and I turned my wheel back and forth and the truck was sitting at the height that I wanted it to. And I was checking all my clearances. And for the front wheel, I deciphered, I'll put it on the screen as well, because I think I'm butchering this right now. Fun fact, when you're in front of a camera, you like lose all the thoughts in your head. 
I really need like key points written somewhere for me to talk about, but not at that high of a production quality yet. Um, anyways, so those that was how I picked out my sizing, and then the only thing that was left after that was picking out my offset. And now the offset was a bit more tricky because offset also deciphers how well your vehicle is gonna feel on the road. And in the back, the offset's a little more simple again, and you pretty much want your axle to be as narrow as it can be. So your offset on your rim, I'm gonna have a 12 inch wide rim, and I have a feeling the offset, I'm gonna be about like eight inches in from the outside, and then that's where my middle plate is gonna be, and that gives me like only four inches back. Um, and but in the front it's completely different because you want you want your offset to be more like two inches in from the outside and then eight inches in from there as i said you have to do a lot of research into this and read a lot of things but that is basically how i picked out my rims and tires for both my truck and my beetle but for the beetle which is why most of you are probably watching this easy cheat code, check out Deep V's, look at his tires, they fit really well. And um, for those of you who made it this far into the video, there's one little thing about that that, I, that you need to know. Uh, most wheel balancing companies won't take uh, those style rims because obviously they don't fit on their machines. So you'll have to make some sort of special plate that uh, adapts the wide five bolt pattern down to a more regular bolt pattern like that. And once I made a plate like that and I told them how to use it, they were perfectly fine balancing the wheels. Now they're all nice and balanced. Um, and yes, you can balance them is what I'm painfully trying to get at, but you just have to make an adapter. Unless you find a place that does Volkswagen wheels, which you might in California, but uh, where I live, I couldn't find any and I didn't feel like spending a bunch of money to ship them out somewhere. So that is how I picked out my rims and tires. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any more questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments um, or even uh, find me on Instagram and you can message me. I'll respond, hopefully. I'm not very good at checking my Instagram, but that's the way you can personally message me. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.